Hello and welcome to this edition of our Enterprise Development Seminar. We'll continue our series of discussions on digital cash machine, how to achieve financial freedom through a technology enabled business. We have established that technology is a tool. It is a means to an end, not an end in itself. So we're going to explore some principles that apply to all kinds of businesses before we go into how to use technology, okay? Because it's important that we lay that foundation that will help us to now see how to integrate technology into the business model. Okay, so let's um, go through the highlights and then we take our opening prayer and we get started. Let's go. Dear God, I ask for an outpouring of your rain upon the business and career in which I have offered my work as an act of worship to you. By your spirit of wisdom and revelation, fill my mind with divinely inspired thoughts and strategies that will empower me for supernatural productivity and extraordinary success in all that I do. Open the heavens and grant me insights, concepts, and ideas that will place a clear distinction upon my work through the uniqueness of my products and services. In addition to this, Father, I ask for the reign of your favor upon every work I have ever rendered. I ask that this reign of favor will cause the voice of my work to be heard on the streets and in palaces, that men and kings will be drawn unto me, and by this, my work generates great surplus. I ask that kings will hear of the excellent spirit your reign has produced in me, and they will open great doors and grant opportunities unto me. Okay. So let's go into the session for today. A lot of entrepreneurs or intending entrepreneurs are so passionate about their ideas and uh, people that are telling us, follow your passion, follow your passion, they are not helping matters. Your idea is not as important as you think, okay? Please let that sink in. It's not so much about your idea as it is about how you are creating value for people, how you are solving their problems, how you are meeting their needs, okay? Before you came up with your idea, people are already living their lives, okay? So how exactly will your idea, how will it improve their lives? That's what you should be thinking about, okay? So you should not be obsessed about your idea, be obsessed about people and the value you are creating for them as you meet their needs and solve their problems. You may think this is not important now, but you will realize why we're saying this as we go along. You know, some people will just sit with an idea that has no chance of working. You know, and it has no chance of working at all. And they keep saying, no, this is my idea, this is my idea. If you are interested in the people, you will find what their needs are, and then you will modify your idea to meet those needs. Do you understand? Very important. Now, before you even go ahead, after you have determined oh, I want to start a business, we covered some of the very foundational things in our previous episode. If you did not um, participate in that, please go get it. Now, after you have settled all of that and you say, okay, this is my business idea and all of that, the next thing you should do is to set up a personal advisory board. Now, lots of, uh, there are lots of strategies to go about you know, starting a business and all of that. But from my own experience, I can tell you that this is going to save you a lot of headache. It's going to save you a lot of time. It's going to increase your speed by setting up a personal advisory board. Now, even God, when he was going to create the world in the account of creation, we read that God said, let us make man in our own image. So he had some other you know, people on the board as it were that he was speaking with, but this is an informal thing, make it informal. Your personal advisory board, make it informal. Look for people in your life that have added value to you. Then look at people that are not yet in your life, but you, you need them in your life to help you launch this, your business idea. So how can you set up you know, uh, um, the relationship, how can you nurture or cultivate a relationship with them in such a way that is going to be mutually beneficial? This is very important because you can't do life alone. And um, if you are trying to start business on your own, it's going to be a lot more difficult. And that is not necessary. You can remove the unnecessary burdens and focus on only the burdens that are necessary. Okay, like um, Jesus Christ said, he said, uh, my yoke is easy. 
and by budging is light. You know, so setting up a business is a yoke. You are going to be, you know, you need to be, and then, you know, we also have a wise man that said, don't be unequally yoked. With. So you, you have to be yoked with some kinds of people. Okay, now you may need to research that um, because we don't have a lot of time, so I'm not going to be able to go into all of the details. But back then, when you want to plow a field, you will yoke two animals together to drive the, the plow, you understand? Okay, so you in this case also, you need partners, you need people that we are going to work together to, to share the work and multiply the results. You understand? So you divide the body and then you multiply the results. King Solomon said in the multitude of counsel, there is safety. He also said that two are better than one because they have a reward for their labor. Now, when we are saying this, when we're talking about partnership, be careful about, you know, setting up your uh, business, um, you know, uh, when you are the legal structure, be careful about setting up a partnership model in your business structure. That's not what we're talking about. Now, if you want to set up a partnership model in your business structure, where there are some people that you own the business together, think about it, do your research, search out those people, put the necessary legal uh, you know, structures in place, the contracts, you know, if somebody leaves, what happens, I don't of that put all of that in place fine okay if if you think it works for you but remember that what we're trying to do is to start a business with little or no money we want to create a system a process whereby anybody can start a business okay with little or no money and with the minimum level of stress you understand so i will personally advise you that in the early days retain 100 percent ownership you need people that will mentor you, you need people that will support you, you need people that will work with you, but you should retain 100% ownership and control, especially in the early days, because you're going to need that flexibility as you go along. And then there are some people that you don't really know what is on their mind, you know, initially, and then you get in there and then they take the whole thing over and you, you, you've lost your vision, you've lost your, you know, the, and you have to start over from scratch, you understand? So let me give you an example. Now, talking about setting up a personal advisory board, when um, I was getting started in business, uh, my personal advisory board included my coach, Dr. Ayodele Adeyeye. Now, and one thing is important here now, your coach doesn't necessarily need to be your kind of business. Your coach, what your coach will offer you for the most part is wisdom. The networks, the benefits of their networks and experience. Okay, so you need somebody that is wise and somebody that has your interest genuinely at heart. Okay, then you need mentors. Your mentors, you don't necessarily need to have a one on one or personal relationship with your mentors in cases where you can. Excellent. But you don't necessarily have to do that. You can learn from mentors through books. You can learn from mentors by attending their webinars, by signing up for their courses, you know, and, you know, by working with them. My, Number one mentor, you know, you know, I'm giving you an example so that you can model, you know, you understand, you can follow the proven process. My number one mentor is uh, Mr. Babatunde Oladile. When I was starting my business, because I worked with him for a while, I, I saw, you know, the way he handled things. I saw the ideas he brings into business. I see, you know, and even now, when I want to make some decisions, I will think in my mind, like, okay, I'll go to start. With Mr. What today and do this, you understand? So now you see those people, they are they are my personal advisory board, but it's not like I'm paying them uh, money, it's not like uh, you understand, but you have to be serving them. It has to be a mutually beneficial relationship. You have to be serving them in very meaningful ways. For example, I have you know my uh, how I'm responsible to my coach, you know, and then my mentor that I just spoke about. Now there are things that have there are projects that I've handled and that I'll just I'm really the one to even reach out. So I'm like, I think I can do this for you, and, and then I'll go all out and make sure that it gets done. You know, if, if there are issues along the way, I look for alternative you know, pathways to ensure that you understand. Like I am saving them deliberately, you know, and there are times that I actually give money because uh, uh, when you look at um, Abraham, Abraham understood this. Abraham, you know, he had a personal, he had allies. Uh, so now you can change this, set up your personal advisory board. You can replace it with, you know, build allies. It's the same thing. Have allies, have people that you work with. Now, when he was going to, you know, to, to, um, deliver his um, nephew okay so um, there was a war you know or a battle and then his nephew was taken captive with a lot of other people and abraham said no, i'm going to go to battle against these people and i'm going to recover everything i'm going to recover my nephew and all of that the bible records that you know he spoke with his um you know his allies you know he had allies around and said okay fine and then he had other people also that he had raised in his own house you know so together with his allies and those other people that he had raised they went after the army and i think an army of five kings or so maybe four kings or five kings and they won 
and they came back. You understand? So it's very, very important that you have people, okay? You have people that you work with. And when they came back, this is where was. So when they came back, oh, they were saying, oh, thank you for this and all of that. The kings that he helped now, the kings that he helped deliver because it was a battle uh, between two sets of kings. So those ones that were delivered through Abraham's uh, intervention, they said, ah, okay, no, so take all of it. Abraham said, no, I'm not going to take anything so that you will not say you are the one that made Abraham rich. But all of these people that went with me, give them their share. Do you understand? So it's very important that people that are helping you to succeed, that you, you remember them deliberately, give them their share. You understand? Uh -huh. And that includes money. You understand? We, we, we can't talk about all of those details here. That's why we have a workshop where we sit down together. You ask questions, I will show you things. Okay, so sign up for the workshop so that you are going to be invited for the next edition. And at the workshop, we have one-on-one, -on -one, you know, uh, 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 attention, personal attention for everybody. Okay, so but uh, I think it suffices to uh, um, stop here concerning coaches and mentors. Okay, then your spouse, if you are married, your spouse should also be on, on your board. Okay, there are some pieces of advice that I've received from my wife that if I had gone on my own, it would have been different. And there was a time that I was actually going to give up. I, I say that a number of times. And she encouraged me. If, I, if she had not encouraged me, I probably would still have. You know, found my foot fit for uh, found my foot to be, yes. You know, but it would have taken a lot of you know, a lot more time, and it would have been more difficult. The fact that I had a support and an encouragement made things a lot easier for me. Then I had a friend. Interestingly, he, he's also my best man, or he was my best man. But was the best man? <laughs> he was the best man for life. So maybe I should say he's my best man. Okay, Samuel Ajekombi. Now he had started business long before. He started business straight from school. He didn't work anywhere. You know, there are people like that. You know, and all of that. And the kind of business I was going to be involved in, he had the expertise. You know, to provide some services. So the very first client that we had, he was the one that practically executed the project. I managed the process. You understand? And then we shared the profit. Do you understand? So. Just giving you some examples so that you can see how to implement this in your own business and in your own um, attempt. And how did we meet? It was my roommate in school. So most of the time, the people that you need, they're already around you. Lots of people will be looking for one big mentor somewhere, one big, you know, just because of the big name. But what you are looking for in the big name, is it the big name that you need? Or do you need solutions to your problems? Do you need somebody that can help you through? You understand? So you need to get your values right. Those people, they're already in your life. My coach, to that I also met him in school. And then I told, told you I met my uh, uh, primary mentor. I worked with him. You understand? So there are already people in your life or people on the periphery of your life, if not exactly in your life, that you can easily, do you understand? Okay, so very, very important. Then uh, you also need people that are uh, directly involved in the delivery of the service, like uh, maybe... Um, um, Service providers, yes, you need service providers, you need uh, people that will uh, contribute to uh, uh, the, the input, okay? People that will contribute to the input that you are going to use to produce your output in your business. Okay, for example, one of the things that um, I started doing when uh, I went into business before we first started the Play Important Company is building websites, okay? So to build websites, I would need a web hosting company. So I signed up as an affiliate with a couple of web hosting companies. So that's also a level of partnership, okay? So you, I had a relationship with them. I could advocate for my clients, okay? And then I could also get some commission when people use my affiliate links. So now you apply these things in your own business, whatever it is you want to do. And um, remember that um, we said, okay, I'm going to repeat this because it's important that we're trying to see how to start a business with little or no money, okay? And also with the least possible stress. So we're focusing on service-based businesses. If you have a product-based business, you can still create a service-based model around it, okay? And that's something that we can discuss and help you to figure out, okay? So after setting up your personal advisory board, which is like, okay, your team, these people are going to be advising you. They are going to be, they are going to be reaching out to them when you need uh, um, support and all of that, okay? Then uh, uh, after doing all of that, it's important to now clarify your business idea. Some of the people that you set up in your personal advisory board, they are going to be involved in this process. For example, your coach and your mentors, they are going to be involved. You see that I said coach and mentors. I believe that you should have one coach, like a primary coach. There's also body that you can call a life coach. And then you can have many mentors in different areas. And your mentors can change depending on your stage of life. Your coach can also change. But I don't think you should have many coaches. You understand? Just like Paul was telling his guys, you know, he says that um, you can have many teachers, but you only have one father. I am your father. You know, those guys were not recognizing his place. So you have to tell them, see, I am your father. I'm the one that started this thing. 
Okay, in this order, you can have as many teachers as you want. In the same way, I am telling you from experience that you should have one coach. If some things happen, things may happen, and then, for example, there are some, you know, things may happen, I don't want to be, but things may happen, and then you may need to change your coach. In my own case, I have not had reason to change my coach, and I don't think I will have to. Uh, here. So, but you may have reason to change your coach if you have to find it on that, but you should not have, uh, or maybe you want to be like Robert Kiyosaki, the R2 that's rich that's for that. You know, that's about you get, you know, that I actually have one that, you know what I mean. But uh, that book actually, those two guys were actually his coaches. You know, somebody was coaching him in career as it went, the other person was coaching him along the lines of business, and then he had to decide, ah, you know, I think I like this one more than this one. So, you have to accept. They have to accept the ideas of rich dad and discard the ideas of poor dad. Do you see still boys that's what we say that you can only have one coach, really? You understand? And then um, um Jesus also said you cannot you know serve two masters. Okay, you either you love one or you hate the other. You understand? So you should have one coach and then you can have many mentors. Okay. And when you are looking for a coach, look for somebody that has done it, somebody that has proven results. Because lots of people are just saying coach, 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 and coach and coach, and then they are <laughs> nothing to show. They don't even have the real business they are on. All the business that is just, just the you know, putting stuff together, you know, and then saying, okay, this is and they are nice people, but they don't help you produce results. So you have to be deliberate in your choice, you know, look for testimonials, look for what they have done, okay, before you choose your coach. The mentor is easy, okay, you know, read books, you know, sign up for courses, participate in training programs. I enrolled in a lot of training programs, and I still do. In fact, as recently as yesterday, just before recording this, my colleagues can testify, so I told them, see, let us enroll in this, and we did. We paid some good dollars. For, for 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 the training, you know, and then we, we, we and just before that, like almost every in fact, my wife was saying yesterday, ah, you are spent a lot, and but thank God the results are showing. Okay, but that's uh, you know, that let, let's not um uh, uh go too much on this. So on clarify your business, I guess your coaches, your mentors, and other people are going to be involved. Then the people you are looking to serve, don't make assumptions, don't assume that you know their needs. You have an idea, and yes. You, you think you know their needs, yes, but have a simple survey. Ask them basic questions. In fact, I was recently, even businesses that I established, they do that. I, was, I recently completed a survey from Sandy. You know, they were asking us some questions. Okay, fine, which other bank do you bank with? Okay, why do you bank with them and all of that? They, they want to get some insights on how they can improve that. Do you understand? So you ask those kind of questions. You can set up a survey with a simple tool like Google Docs. I prefer to use a simple step survey on your WordPress site, which is the last week we talked about. You need to have a domain name and then eventually you set up a simple website to start with. And you know, you're already beginning to leverage technology now. Okay. Now so even by using Google Docs, you're already beginning to use technology because before you have to print questionnaires and go out and all of that. Now you can you know, create a simple survey in Google Docs or Survey Monkey or whatever you want. But I prefer to use a self test system because it makes a lot of things easier. I can immediately send a message to people once they complete the survey. I can get them uh, um, into my um, CRM or even if it's just a, a, an email marketing system like MailChimp, I can automatically do all of that. Okay, I can immediately send an alert to a platform where we sell this person has completed this, okay, we can follow up immediately. So, but all of those things, so those are some of the details we're going to cover when we sit down and practice, because this is a practical, I told you, if you follow everything here, by the time we finish this series, you would have built a profitable business, you would have started making money, you understand, like real money, you will be in business, okay? So it's not just about these insights that we're sharing, we're sharing the insights, and then we're also going to sit down and implement step by step. And we'll have that every month. We have a workshop every month where we stay there overnight, one full day, or, you know, it's actually two days. We get in the first day and we leave the second day. So we have all the time, okay? And then in between also, we have online meetings, you know, and all of that, and you can get the mentorship or the coaching that you need, okay? So. That's important. Clarify your business idea. So I said you are, um, you are going to have brainstorming sessions with some members of your advisory board or all of them, depending on the kind of advisory board you set up. Then you are going to do market research. You can do that by setting up a simple survey that helps you to define the demographics and psychographics of the people you are trying to reach. Demographics are basic, you know, statistical information about people, like, okay, what's their age? Where do they live? What kind of work do they do? You know, what's their level of income? You know, what are their, what, what is their gender? Because there's some businesses that are targeted at certain kinds of gender, you know, like maybe targeted at male, targeted at female. For example, if you have a, 
um, um, bathing salon, your primary clients are likely to be male. Fine, you are going to have some female clients, but your primary clients are likely to be male. And if you have a beauty salon, your primary clients are likely to be female. You may have some male clients, but you, you understand what we're talking about. So you have to clarify those details. Those are the demographics. Where do they live? What's their age? What is their sex or their gender? All of those things, their occupation. Then you also need to know the uh, um, psychographics. Psychographics are also very important. Those are their attitudes, their aspirations in life, the way they think, you know, all of those kind of things. So your survey will be designed to help you um, answer those questions and gain clarity in those areas so that you will know if your business idea even has a chance of working. And sometimes your business idea has a chance of working, but it is with a certain kind of audience or a certain kind of target market. So you will know if you are targeting the wrong market, okay, in the process of clarifying your business idea. And those are things that you don't do it in one day. You sit down, you, you know, you, you, you think through, you get data, you interpret it and all of that. Okay, so after you've done all of this, then determine a suitable business model. Different people can be doing the same business but adopt different models. Okay, so what model are you going to adopt? And business model is simply, you know, it's, it's, when you have business model, you know, it's a big word, you know, there's nothing big about it. It's just how do you make money? Okay, that is what, that's the question your business model answers. Now, take for example, Jumia Foods. Jumia Foods is a food uh, business. The Chicken Republic is also a food business, but their business models are different. Okay, Chicken Republic actually has, you know, they have outlets where they actually cook their food and all of that. And so, for junior foods, they don't cook any food. And now, this is one model that is becoming very popular, aggregator model, platform model, where, you know, you aggregate or you build a platform to connect and then make things easier for people and all of that. So what junior foods does is they have the platform where a lot of different food businesses can now come and then you go to junior foods, you order, and then your food gets delivered to you. Now, it's a different business model, you know, from the one where you enter yourself and you sit down. Some people want that experience. You know, maybe you want to, you understand what I mean. <laughs> but then you want that experience, okay, let us go in there, you know, let us sit down. Yes, it's fine. That is targeted at some people. But some people want to deliver to them in their houses, okay? And as you grow, you can begin to in integrate, you know, um, different models into your business. You have a primary business model that you can integrate other models into it as you grow. Now, you're going to find some uh, businesses, for example. Now, I'm not going to go into details of this, but when you look at a business like um, DSTV, you know, they have DSTV, they have GoTV, it's the same company, but the business model is slightly different, okay? Now, so those are some things that we're going to get into the details as we start. And that is, that start is a very big word, very important. Now, so that's the last thing I'm sharing with you before we move on is that you do not learn until you launch. So you may not understand all of these things. You may not understand all of these things yet, you know, and that's why I find, but your coach, your mentor, your advisory board, all of those people, as you study, as you read, you are going to start gaining more clarity, and then you start. So you do not learn until you launch. It's after you really start. Okay, you start in, in a small way. You start a minimum viable version of what you want to do, a pilot version, you know, like you, you understand, okay? And then you start and you see what it looks like. That is when you are really going to learn. It is called the education of the road, okay? When you get on the road and you're actually doing it. So you, you don't know what to do until after you have done it. Now, that may sound paradoxical, but that's the way it works. You think you know, but it's after you have done it, you now reflect, you now say, okay. So this is, so you learn after the facts. You, of course, you need to get all of the information, all of the support you need at the beginning, but the real learning comes after you have done it. So it's important that you get started. Don't wait until everything is perfect. As I am now, there is a lot that I don't know. Then they, you can, there is a lot I don't know, but there is also a lot that I know. So if I make use of what I know, the ones that I don't know will not matter. Do you understand? So that is it. So you get started. You do not learn until you launch. Now look at even God. After God created everything, you know, and all of that. Okay. And then um, the account of creation records that, oh, and he looked and said it was very good. You know, it was very good. He saw, so he was learning, okay, fine, this thing will be worked as I planned. Then after he then looked at this, ah, then he looked at man. He said, ah, and uh, God said it is not good for man to be alone. He, he probably did not anticipate. Probably he thought that it's better. But after he had created man, he says, ah, it is not good for man to be alone. This thing that I've done, even though it's very good, there is something, it can be better. You understand? And then he learned that, oh, you know, he, 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 from the process, oh, it is not good for man to be alone. Let me make a help that will be suitable for him. You understand? So you do not learn 
until you launch. So that's why you need to be continually iterating. Iteration is very important. You are doing things over and over again in different ways. You are making little adjustments here and there. Like everything we're doing today, if you have followed us for a while, you see that there's a lot of iteration in what we do. You know, we're improving, we're making changes, we're making adjustments, okay? So there has to be that spirit of continuous improvement, okay? You will make mistakes, you'll learn from them, you'll move on, but you make up your mind that you're not going to make the same mistake twice. You make that mistake and then you learn from it and you move on. And then you also learn from other people's mistakes. Okay, that's the essence of coaches, mentors, reading books, you know, studying, because building a business is work. Okay, don't let anybody be see it's a real, it's real work, real serious work, and you must be ready for it. That's why it's not something that you should attempt to do alone. It's going to be unnecessarily you know, difficult if you attempt to do it alone. Okay, so we're going to pause here for now, and I want to remind you of two things. I want you to remember two things. If you don't remember anything at all that we have said, remember these two things. One, get the job. Yes, if you don't have a job, if you are jobless, and you want to start a business, I'm an entrepreneur, get the job. Get a job somewhere. It may not be the kind of job you want, but in that job, you are learning things. You are learning how to relate with people. You are learning how to... That's why I wrote a book, how to start your own business without quitting your job. So maybe it's with you No, you can start your business without quitting your job, without using your employer's resources, without, without doing anything shady, without doing anything illegal, without doing anything unethical. Okay, so get a job. At least even the little money you are getting from that job is going to provide some form of safety net and sustenance. And even if they are not paying you, even if it's a volunteering in you know, job, you are just a volunteer there and all of that. You will learn a lot. You will build relationships. Okay, I cannot go into all of the details of this now. I can share personal examples. Okay, ah, no, we don't have the time. I can share personal examples of how this has happened. Even now that I'm building a business, you know, and all of that, I practically call the shot, you know, uh, as it were. But I still have people that I work with them as if I am on their payroll, as if I am an employee in their company, and I am not. But I work with them that way. You understand? So it's very important. Get a job, okay? A, a job, you know, sign up for an apprenticeship program, you know, but be plugged into a system that is already working. You understand? It's just like a, a, a branch of a tree. You know, once you cut off the branch, it dies. But a branch that is connected to a tree that is receiving life from the from the source, from the ground, you know, that branch will stay alive. You understand? Jesus also used that illustration for his disciples. So you need to get a job or somewhere where you are serving. Very important. Then secondly, don't try to start something new. Yes, you know, there are a few people that will do that and they will do well. But if you don't have the resources, you don't have the, you know, you don't have the uh, um, financial backing and all of that, don't try to start something new. You know, the wise man again, um, King Solomon, he said, there's nothing new under the sun. Now, what people are really doing is that they are finding new ways to do old things. For example, transportation. People have always been moving with their legs from one place to another. But after a while, somebody said, ah, this can be better. They made bicycles. You know, so people are moving with bicycles. After all, somebody said, this can be better. Then we have motorcycles, we have cars, we have, you know, here aircraft. Now people are traveling to space. It's still transportation. It's nothing new. But they are developing new ways, you know, to meet those old needs. You understand? So don't try to start something new. And don't try to take on the giants on their own turf. Okay, there are people, there are businesses that are already giants in the field, they are looking to enter. You, you can take them on, but don't take them on on their own top. When David was going to take on Goliath, for example, they gave him the hammer, they gave him everything. He said, no, these ones will not work for me. He used what he, what he understood. Do you understand? Okay, so what you can do uh, uh, a lot of times is that you should find the ideas that have already worked. Then model those ideas and build on them. I'm not saying copy, don't copy. Model those ideas and build on them. Let me give you an example. We're talking about business model. One uh, 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 business with an interesting business model is Airbnb. They use the platform model. Now, there are different kinds of platform models. There is the peer-to-peer -peer platform model. You know, uh, there is the... You know, there are different kinds, so, but essentially, some people call it aggregator model, also, but essentially, they use the platform model, okay? Now, this Airbnb, you can go and study Airbnb, if you don't know about them, Airbnb is A-I-R-B-N-B, -B, okay? Some people may, may be hearing for the first time, A-I-R-B-N-B, -B, that's Airbnb. Now, do you know that that same model, you can adapt it for core members, if you're in Nigeria, you know, there's a program called National Youth Service Corps, you know? Now, so members of, you know, graduates are posted to different parts of the nation to serve for one year and all of that. And accommodation is usually an issue. Do you know that you can apply the AB, adapt the Airbnb model to solve that problem? So that's what we're saying. So look for an existing problem, something that is, you know, easy, you know, something that you can start, you know, and all of that. And it may not necessarily be easy, but it's possible. It has been proven to work. Then you adapt that model. And if you're interested in this, we can actually work together. For example, I want to do, but I'm doing a lot. I don't have the time for that right now, but it's something I will eventually do if nobody does it. And even if somebody does it, I might do my own, just like a loop, you know, when you were saying that other people have written, 
if you are own gospel, but I also, I will write my own, you understand? But if you're interested in this, it's something that we can work together on, and we can discuss that during the workshop, okay? So you um, register for the workshop. You are going to see the link before we finish, and then uh, um, we can discuss that and get started. So I'm just giving you an example. So these are these things that are practical, you understand? So look for a model that is already working. Look for a business that is already working. Then model that business, okay, and improve upon it, and then use it to target a particular segment or a particular niche of the market. In this case now, we have niched down to core members, you understand? So, and that is applicable in a lot of other ways. That same model can be adapted, you know, in a lot of other ways, you know, maybe by looking for a different audience or, or a different uh, um, target, target market, you see, the different segment, you know, of the market and all of that. Just thinking a few things and then you're in business, okay? And um, this is part of our uh, vision to start at least, to have at least 150 businesses across 193 countries. And those businesses are going to be providing employment for at least 3 million people by 2046. So if you have a business you want to start, we are willing to support you, okay? You can end up being one of those 150 businesses that we're going to start, okay? So we're going to stop here for now. You can post your questions in the chat if you've not done that already. And uh, if you are joining us live, you will also find a link that you can click and answer your questions using um, um, that link. But um, better still, join us on Business Mastery Club. You can see the link on the screen. That is where we continue the conversation and you can ask you know, a lot of other questions. Then take advantage of all of these resources here too. The link to register for the workshop is also there, brainskills.xyz slash workshop. We have that workshop every month. Okay, so once you register, we'll invite you for the next edition. Okay, the course to think about for today, Behavior modification will always remain a very poor substitute for character formation. One treats the symptoms and puts up a socially acceptable facade. The other deals with the root issues and creates real transformation. That's from Philip Amiola. And I want to encourage you, follow me on Twitter. I share a lot of you know, things that will help you, that you find useful on Twitter. And I follow back. Once you have a name, you have a profile picture, I see that you're a real person, I follow back, okay? And you don't post the uh, rubbish stuff, like um, nudity, you know, all those kind of stuff. You know, once I see those things, I just immediately, I unfollow, but you are, you know, a normal person, you know, and all of that, and you have picture, you have, you have um, your name, I'll follow back, okay? And then we can connect better. Then we have this from Jim Rohn, the worst thing one can do is not to try, to be aware of what one wants, and not giving to it. To spend years in silent hurt, wondering if something could have materialized, never knowing. Think about these two quotes. Okay, so let's take a closing prayer. I declare with full assurance of faith that I have a rich, satisfying, and overflowing life. By the grace and mercy of God, I have received wisdom and power to build up vast assets that have continued to generate an abundance of wealth in profits, equity, retainers, consulting fees, dividends, interest, royalty, rental income, residual income, rebates, grants, gifts, annuity, capital gains, and other forms of income. My wealth and riches have continued to increase and multiply exceedingly so much that accounting for them is like counting the stars in the sky and the sand on the seashore. I daily present my business and career as an altar of sacrifice to God. Therefore, he has blessed the work of my hands, causing me to implement insights and ideas that have made me so successful that nations come to my light and kings to the brightness of my rising. I have become very great and extremely distinguished in every way. Amen. Thank you very much for joining us today. Remember to join us on Business Mastery Club. If you've not done that already, the link is connect.tpcl.com.ng slash RSVP. That's where we share all of the important information, all of the important details. And you can also join the conversation, ask for questions and all of that. And uh, we also share the link. You know, sometimes we share the link to the recorded version, okay, so that you can even watch over and over again if you need to. And also share this with your friends. It will help. It will help them and it will also help you. Okay, when you share what is valuable with others, you are actually also helping yourself, okay, because what goes around comes around. Thank you very much and bye for now.